This is a reenactment of an interview that occurred almost 35 years ago. It was 1972 in Ithaca, New York. I was a student at Cornell University and had to do an interview with someone for a journalism elective that I was taking. Dr. Sagan was a professor of mine at the time, so I thought this would be a great opportunity for me to get to know him a little better and complete my assignment at the same time. Whoa! Dr. Sagan, where'd you come from? Uh, sometimes I'm magic. Don't worry about it. So, you wanted to interview me for one of your classes? Yeah, it's an assignment for my journalism class. I really appreciate you taking the time to help me out. Oh, it's no problem. Where should we start? Well, I guess with the basic stuff. Where'd you grow up? What was your childhood like? You know, stuff like that. Okay. Ooh, I was born and lived most of my childhood in Brooklyn, New York. My parents' names were Rachel and Sam, and I had a little sister named Carol. Are those your parents up there? Yeah, dear old mom and pop. So what did you do as a little boy in Brooklyn? Well, I read quite a bit, mostly science fiction novels, a lot of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Burroughs wrote very descriptively about Mars, which is, I imagine, where my fascination came from. World War II was also going on, so there was new technology cropping up all over the place. Uh, but those two, among others, you know, had profound influences on what I'm interested in today. What are your primary interests? Well, you might know that my bachelor's and master's degrees are both in physics, uh, my doctorate in main area research is in astronomy and astrophysics. Right now I'm writing a book called The Cosmic Connection, An Extraterrestrial Perspective. And you just won an award this year too, right? Yeah, wow, you should know a lot about me. This year I was awarded with NASA's Exceptional Science Achievement Award, which I'm accepting tomorrow. In fact, I have to leave right now to catch my plane. Would it be possible to continue this when I return? Yeah, yeah, of course. See you when you get back. This would be the second award that Carl would be given from NASA. Three years prior, in 1969, he was awarded the NASA Apollo Achievement Award. He would go on to win many more awards, including a Pulitzer Prize a few years later in 1978. Then I'm back. <laughs> Thanks for meeting up again to finish yep. the interview. Magic. Holy. <laughs> Okay, so, um, well, how was your trip? <laughs> Do you feel like you could use this recognition to help reach your goals? Well, one of my top priorities is to spread education about science and promote how fun it can be. I've been invited into a few TV shows because of the recognition I get from things like winning these awards, and that provides me with a venue to publicly express my thoughts about science education in a manner that reaches many. This is your second job in education. You taught at Harvard before this, correct? Uh, those bastards wouldn't give me tenure. But my wife loves it here in Ithaca. I feel a lot more comfortable amongst other professors here at Cornell than I did at Harvard. You are married? Yeah, uh, to a woman named Linda. I, I thought you'd done your homework on me. Well, I have uh, two children from a previous marriage to a woman named Lynn. In fact, I have a photo album here if you're interested. Aw, oh, these are great pictures. Thanks. Well, I think I have enough to write my paper now. Thank you so much for your time. This will be great once I get it all written out. It was my pleasure. I'm glad I could help, and I had a great time chatting with you. Oh, uh, bye now. Dr. Sagan wasn't really magic. That was just clever film editing. In 1979, Carl created Cosmos, the short television series that would catapult him into the mainstream like nothing else had yet to date. In the public eye, he made many predictions that drove his colleagues crazy and captivated audiences around the world. His interest in extraterrestrial life only got stronger as he grew older, and he eventually wrote and produced the film Contact, starring Jodie Foster just a few years before his death in 1996. Many of his students have gone on to become successful in the integral parts of our country's space exploration programs. Carl himself was often a primary consultant on space missions for NASA. He left his wife at the time of the interview in late 1979 to marry Ann Druran, who had a profound influence on his later years. 
Carl successfully reshaped the way science was thought about in everyday life and made major contributions to current research on Mars. A resonating joke about Carl has to do with his theories, which are always considered to be crazy at first, but years later end up being correct in some manner or another. In closing, I would like to recite to you one of Carl's favorite scientific aphorisms. Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Thank you.